Art Show. We're taping live here at the Clave Social, 1345 St. Clair Avenue West, in the heart of World Cup City. <laughs> I'll tell you. How's everybody doing? There's so much going on in the world, but before we get into anything, let me ask you, what time is it? Hot Topics! I like that. It's time for Hot Topics. So yes, as, uh, <laughs> as I mentioned, World Cup is going on. How many people uh, watched that dismal <laughs> performance the other day? Yes. Brazil and, um, so sad. and Germany. Yeah. How many people see it? Watching a train about to crash very slowly. You know it was going to happen in the ending, but it was like you kind of hope there was a goal coming in between. Was it was it me or did you yeah. feel that way? You're like, no, please, please. But there was like a Brazilian goals going into that net. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. What, what do you think happened? They just kind of fell apart to me. What do you think? No Neymar. No Neymar. You think? Yeah, he was he was kind of the glue. He kept everybody together. And then uh, yesterday, did you see that match? Yeah. yeah. And so it was like kind of the reverse of what happened the other day. There was like no goals at all. So uh, Argentina, how many Argentinian fans out here? Yeah. Well, okay. So they won by a penalty kick. So um, looks like they are going into the finale, the grand finale. The showdown is Sunday, Argentina and Germany. So I'm putting my toonie down on Germany. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah? yeah? You think Germany's going to take it? That's going to be a little awkward, right? Being in South America and a European country wins. You think that's going to go over a little bit uh, tough? Maybe. Might be a little tense, but you know, if um, you know, the, the better players win. And then on Saturday, it's Brazil and Netherlands, and they're going to be fighting for third place. So uh, I'm going to be glued and seeing what's going on there. All right, so Rob Ford, he's always in the headlines, isn't he? <laughs> Rob Ford, how many Rob Fords out, out, out there? How many Rob Ford fans out there? <laughs> oh, that's good, that's good. Um, you know what, he's still really popular despite all his, you know, uh, shenanigans and antics. Well, apparently, uh, according to the Toronto Star, Rob Ford, you know, he, he just came out of rehab. He was away for two months at uh, Greenstone Rehabilitation Center. Apparently, he was kicked out of his group therapy class <laughs> because his, his behavior was so disruptive. You know, like, the whole part of sharing in group therapy is when, you know, you, the, the whole part of healing is sharing your story. So you sit down, you say, hi, my name is Nikki, and then everybody goes, hi, Nikki, and then you start to, like, disclose. He would interrupt everybody and go, stop. And that's the whole healing process. So um, apparently he was throwing things, breaking things. Uh, and according to um, some reports, they said he was a bully at uh, the rehab center. So um, it's kind of a, a stark contrast to his claim that he was going through a healthy healing experience there. Um, he was kicking and screaming the whole time, apparently, and said, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. And uh, one counselor actually quoted, we are not paid enough to deal with this guy. So he, he went in uh, like a lion, and hopefully now he's like a, a lamb. You think maybe that experience tamed him? No. No? You're not convinced? Kind of. Kind of? Well, he may just win again, so brace yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what else is going on? So joining the League of Bad Boy Mayors, did you hear about uh, former mayor of New Orleans? Tom Joyner is uh, going to the pen. 10 years in prison for bribery and money laundering. Um, you know, he's been doing this activity apparently since his time in office, um, since Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. So, hmm, lots been going on. And um, I just want to actually ask everyone if we can just uh, bow our heads and just have a moment of silence just all humor me please just for like two seconds <clears throat> um, I just wanted this moment to just reflect on someone who's off the market now Ryan Gosling is off the market <laughs> uh, apparently he's going
going to be a baby daddy, and he is having a baby with Ava Mendes. Ava Mendes is four years old, and she came clean and admitted that she is seven months pregnant. So we're going to have a little, a little gosling soon. Yeah. So um, sorry, ladies. How many people were, were hoping, hoping, wishing something would happen? Yeah. It doesn't look like he's going to get together with Rachel McAdam either. Remember the lady. Uh, his um, love interest in the notebook, they actually ended up, you know, getting together after the film, so it doesn't look like it's going to be back together. Anyway, we have got a great show for you today. I want you to please put your hands together and, um, you know, give a big round of applause for our person who's coming on, Victoria Laurie Faber. She's going to be talking about The Narcissist. Jean Baker, she's going to be talking to you. And then we've got some killer performances by Acoustic. He's going to be to We also have Redney. He's going to be throwing down today on the stage. And a performance by Moi. So you don't want to go anywhere. Come right back. You're here at the Mickey Talk Show. is a relationship expert and author of Find Yourself Culture, Victoria Laurie Fabish. So glad to have you back. You're a regular here. I I'm love a regular. That. I love it. It's fun. <laughs> You're fun. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I Grab love new spot. Uh, it's, isn't it amazing? And I match here? your couch. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of say purple in your shirt. The, uh, I know that we have a lot in common. We're definitely simpatico, and that's why it's such a pleasure to have you Thank here. Thank you. Glad to be here. So we have a hot topic today, yeah. and I think I've dated this personality type. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about okay. spotting and coping with the narcissist. Yeah. So who is so the art narcissist? Well, listen. We all have a little bit of narcissism in us. It's like we're born narcissists. You know, as little babies. It's, feed me, love me, you know, me, 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 pay attention to me. And that's normal. And then we kind of become social and we sort of develop this ability to be sort of um, empathetic, compassionate with our fellow right. family members and friends. And then often people who come from a lot of trauma in their childhoods will often, not often, will at times develop a, a, a narcissistic personality. And sometimes that becomes a pathology, a disorder. That's what I'm really talking about. People who end up in relationships or the children of narcissists, which is really, really tough. Basically, I, I do this. Because I'm doing a webinar series, and I wanted one of the one of the episodes is how to spot dysfunctional personalities okay. from the from the top of the relationship. So you're not like six, eight months into the relationship, but a year into. Oh, I'm I'm with a narcissist. I'm with a codependent. I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm with someone who's you know boundaryless. It's like no, let's learn some of these things. And the big one, you know. On YouTube, I have you know so many views, 400,000 views. Right. One video, the narcissism video, 90,000 views. So it's like it's like it's such a that's such an important important yeah. thing. So how do you know you're in a relationship or that you've been the child of the narcissist? Mm -hmm. Essentially, the narcissist, there is no room for anyone else's feelings. Okay, it's just their feelings that matter. Anyone else's feelings, just not at all. You know not at all at something they want to hear. The other thing is they love to play the victim. Mm -hmm. So there's this superiority complex with a victim thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know you can never you feel always guilty around them. You feel people develop very codependent. It's like what did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? And, and suddenly you're constantly feeling like when you're in a relationship with a narcissist like narcissist like you are never going to be right. You're never going to win. So I, I, I urge people to run the other way when they experience that because it's not something you can solve. You cannot, you cannot fix the other person. You cannot be better. It's, there's a feeling of not enoughness when you're in a relationship with a narcissist or when you're a child of a narcissist similarly. It's like there is no room for your feelings. Often people grow up 
when they are the children of narcissists, like they don't know what their personality is. They don't know what they want, what they don't want, who they really are. They're like, I'm lost. Other people's wants and needs are much more important. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something I definitely, I work with a lot of people who are in relationship with narcissists or have been the children of a narcissist. Okay. And true, uh, when you're growing up with a narcissistic personality, uh, very often you might seek a partner with the same personality because that's all you know. It right? seems so to be that when, familiar. yes, it's something like you normalize it. Yeah. There's a lot of drama with a narcissistic personality. Mm -hmm. A lot of ups and downs and drama and oh and poor me and you've done me wrong and, and, and how dare you even though you're, you know, it's the other person doing a lot of right. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so this sort of personality will uh, tend to have a child and then that child Will then look for that type of personality as well. And, and they're like, why did I marry my mother, my father, my dad? <coughs> it's something you normalize, it's something that you knew, it's something that that type of drama was very attractive in the end, yeah. even though it's destructive. So it's, it's kind of like an adrenaline rush to be around that person. It's, they're never they're very moments. charming. They're very charming. Very charming. And then something will. Charming but manipulative. Manipulative, that's the big yeah. word. And I want people who are dating in this world of selfies. <laughs> and, and, and I don't want to have people think, oh, selfies, narcissism. We all are a little narcissistic. Everyone has a little bit of that. It's just that if it becomes pathological, if it becomes, you know, extremely sort of almost dangerous energy, that's where you've got to really watch it. And you've got to, if, if you're constantly feeling like, I'm not enough, I did something wrong, I'm, you know, what did I do? We have a problem. That's. Do, do the narcissists look for a personality type? Yeah, they because look. Because they get with somebody. So someone yeah. has to be very sympathetic. Exactly. You know, you, you're exactly right. It's almost like the fit. Mm -hmm. It's a fit. It's like the narcissist tends to prey on, on that codependent, weaker personality and look for that because they're looking to be aggrandized they're looking to be ego filled essentially so they're they're not going to find they're not going to stick with someone who's constantly fighting them okay. they're going to be sticking to someone who's like oh how can i make it better how can i solution how can i people please how can i you know the disease to please they want that yeah. they need that okay. so is there any mindful. fixing a narcissist or is it just something so funny i did another video is there any hope for narcissistic personality got a lot of commentary on that um, when the personality is in the disorder state, no, it's a pathology, it's very difficult to fix because they don't end up in therapy offices. Because a true narcissists will not think that there's anything wrong with them, right? right. right? So if they're ending up in a, in, a, in a therapist's office, they're not a true narcissist. They're feeling like, oh my gosh, I have a personality style that people say, or maybe people have complained about them, or maybe, and then that's not a true narcissist, that's someone who has narcissistic tendencies and wants to kind of not live that way, and wants to be more conscious and more mindful of how they're impacting their, their environment and the people in their life, right? Are there different types of narcissists? I think it's on a continuum. Okay. I think it's on a, on a sort of a continuum, and you've got the personality, personality disorder here, and then over here, kind of regular run-of-the-mill, you know, selfie culture, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, but, but I would say, just various, the more trauma a person experience, the more the disorder will be there. So the disorder is based from the, uh, low self-esteem. Yeah. Uh, and, and they try to overcompensate with this kind of grandiose uh, bravado. That That's they're, right. They're, you know, hot and the poor me. Not, and poor me. And poor me. Poor so me. martyr and superior. Correct. And never will admit they're wrong. Okay. It's a big problem for them to admit they're wrong. And if they're apologizing, they're internally not thinking they're wrong. They're just doing it to appease you for That's a That's right. They're there to just kind of soften everybody and they can manage that. So charm you back into their trap. Exactly, again. exactly. Oh, and, and if they see that there's any problems coming, arising from their actions, oh, they're immediately apologizing. But is it is it authentic? Probably not. not so much. Because they don't have the empathy. They don't know how to That's right. Before. There's an actual problem in their development. You know, how they came up from the, the trauma, there's a problem in the development, the empathy development that we get when we're not in trauma as when, children. When do we develop empathy? What age? You know, it's it's many possibilities, but you know, the, the general thought is around five, six years old. You know, you, you actually are starting to develop it in that earlier, but you solidify that at five, okay. four, five, six. Worldview we develop around six years old. Well, I was told that your personality is pretty much formulated by the time you're five, six years old. That's so it. everything you're going to learn in life is learned in kindergarten. And it solidifies, and exactly. Solidifies. And it solidifies right there. And trauma is a tough, is a, is a tremendous uh, beginning of all of that. Okay. Yeah. And, and it spirals from there. Exactly. 
Exactly. So tell us about your webinar series. I'm excited on, uh, so July 24th I start a very cool free webinar series Google Hangout. Come and hang out with me this summer. It's called Radical Relationship Rescue. Uh, the four, so RadicalRelationshipRescue.com, come and sign up, it's free. Uh, and we're doing four for the summer, and we'll continue from there. But it's the, the transformational keys to empowering your relationship with yourself and with others. We start with uh, get over the, get past the big five, guilt, anger, resentment, jealousy, and shame. The big five that basically destroy us. And so that's the very first webinar, and I want to talk about very, very specific tools on how to move from a trauma place to a healing place. And I give you actual tools that I work with very successfully in the office to help people actually transform those big, extremely compromising five. And then I also, the second one is how to spot a good boundary from a bad boundary. People don't know what boundaries are. They're constantly transgressing boundaries. They come from homes that, that don't respect the boundary experience, and so they don't know what that is, and they're getting into trouble constantly. And the third one is um, how to spot a, a, a dysfunctional personality in, in, from the start. To so read I, the red flags early. Exactly. To understand, you know, what is narcissism? What is commitment phobia? And what do they want from you? <laughs> That's a huge one. Before you sign up. What is codependency? And, and, and why is that constantly happening? So I, I, people want to, I really want people to understand the red flags of relationships. And then the, the, the last one of the summer, and then I'll continue, is uh, how to transform your inner bully, you know, that go, 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 mean, inner, judgy self into a more supportive coaching self. And I really work very specifically with these concepts in the office. And, you know, people really do transform and become, you know, better aspects of themselves. And uh, this webinar series, as I said, is free. And, RadicalRelationshipRescue.com. So, so how can people hang out with you? What do they do? They just go there to the RadicalRelationshipRescue.com. Just click on the Join Me Now, and uh, I'll take you through a small process to have you sign up. And I'm going to be live and in person 10 a.m. on the 24th of, uh, of July, and it's interactive. It's a Google Hangout, which is so cool. It's interactive. And then we continue, and I'm going to be giving you some coaching through that whole process. So I hope you join me. It's going to be great. And it's absolutely free. Free, free of charge. Now, uh, before we uh, move on, I, I I read this book in one night, and I'm so wow. grateful that you know you've come into my life and, and you know presented this to me. And I think this is something that if anyone wants to understand more about your self culture. Yes. Um, so self dash self hyphen culture dot com. You can get the book. We're an ebook now, so if that's your preference, on Kobo, Kindle, blah blah blah, all the different. You know formats, yeah. please. You know we've got the actual book and then the ebook as well. And the biggest lesson I learned from this is that you have to fill your cup first, and whatever create an overflow. Whatever the overflow is, you can give away. Give, you got to take care of yourself. First. Yeah, you got to take care of yourself first. And you know, even though it's kind of an obvious concept, it's very tough. People are influencing you, saying, you know, do this, guilting, you know, shaming you into doing things. Don't love yourself. Fill yourself. Uh, be kind to yourself and then create an overflow and then you're of use, of real use to others and the planet, I believe. Uh, where can uh, people find you? Okay, so you've got the Google Hangout. Yeah. So we've got the Google Hangout, which is the radical relationship rescue.com. My main website is visualizationworks.com because of course visualization does work, right? Visualizationworks.com and the book is self culture.com and you can follow me on Twitter at at self culture now and on Facebook, uh, self dash culture. So it's all about self culture. Self culture versus versus other people's culture. Self culture, not family culture, and not not, not 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 work culture, <laughs> not anyone. It's self culture. Awesome. Okay, it's always a pleasure. And you're coming back very soon, right? Yeah. When do I come back again? In October. In October. Great. Well, <laughs> it's not soon. Let that summer happen. You know. <laughs> Victoria. Here. 
uh, once again. And uh, I want to let everyone know uh, at the Clave Social, um, Jane very graciously came and helped decorate uh, when I was doing uh, a music, a Canadian Music Week event here. So if you look around, the audience will spin around and look. Uh, all of what you see on the walls is Jane's doing. So she put this together and with the uh, theme of music and did a beautiful job. So I just want to thank you again. you can do as a career that really drives you, that pushes you to kind of want to work harder. And I knew I wanted to work for myself, but it was just finding that balance of what I enjoyed, and, you know, that passion that, much like yourself, something that drives you, that really makes you want to push and work harder and um, achieve and strive for more. So um, I've always been interested in textiles and colors and, and homes and all of the things that you can do to help improve the look of a, a property or an environment and it just kind of grew from there. So yeah, and it's uh, proving to be really, really uh, a great choice, I think, for me. It's a great choice for, so, yeah. it's a great choice for all of us uh, working with you because you. you do so much to enhance the environment. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when you go into a project, mm -hmm. you decide to take on a project, what's your mindset? You don't take on everything. No, um, it really, it, I think it depends on, you know, your first meeting with the, with a client if it's, um, because what my company does is we stage, um, we work with realtors and developers and uh, people that are flipping properties to, uh, and I work with them to stage the properties. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's to get their uh, property sold and on the market and looking the best that they can possibly look. But on the flip side of it, I also work with builders to be able to set up, or not builders, but um, people that have bought homes mm -hmm. that kind of, they didn't get, per se, what they wanted. So um, whether it's uh, built-in shelving units, whether it's a piece of furniture, right. or whether it's something that, that they just kind of feel that the home that they purchased didn't offer them, mm -hmm. and then I can design it. I don't, I don't, um, I say build it, I can design it, and then I can get someone in that can actually build what it is that they really kind of feel that they were missing out on in that home. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of, it balances out because it, um, you know, my company really helps both kind of um, aspects of buying, selling, and, you know, the, the capture for my company is um, sta uh, staged uh, to, to sell and designed for life. And that's actually what we do, you know, we stage it to sell it and design it so it's a more an environment that people want to live in and be happy in and live in for a long time to come. Right. So. What, what are you currently working on? Um, I'm actually working on a project in Aurora for a house that's almost 3,000 square foot, um, a woman that I'm very um, happy to have met. Um, and she has a, a dining room that she wanted to work us to work on. So we're just kind of putting together um, you know, uh, furniture like a dining table, a credenza, um, all the lighting and stuff that's still got to go in the flooring. But the challenge with this particular project was the home, it's, um, it's a, first of all, a beautiful, beautiful home. But the kitchen, there's a long hallway when you go in, and the kitchen was off down the hallway and off to the right. And they'd had the dining room that they wanted, they kind of allocated a room down the hall and off to the left, which isn't the way a, ho a home is, flow is always supposed to be set up. And there's this beautiful area that was off the kitchen that, you know, from my point of view, was supposed to be set up as the dining room, but the previous homeowners didn't have it that way, so the homeowners now didn't think that it was supposed to be the dining room, so I kind of pitched them an idea and also put a plan together and did, um, ran something through a design program to show them how it would look and they've totally gone for the idea which I was so excited about and um, yeah so we've got this beautiful space that we're working on with um, archways uh, on two of the walls and so you look into this fabulous dining area that's going to have um, you know some beautiful lighting in it and a gorgeous table that's from Castle Life and I love Castle Life it's absolutely the best store out there um, and you know a beautiful credenza very minimalistic but really kind of nice clean lines 
um, nice light walls and a table that beautifully matches in the tones and the kind of a more monochromatic color palette with the floor as well. So it's a first I'm very excited about. All right, well, let me get your critique, because I kind of designed this set <laughs> with uh, Dave Molina's help, mm -hmm. the manager here. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? What do you think of the I love it. I the, love the, um, is it a little feng shui? It's got the feng shui going on. Yeah, and uh, typically when um, I'm doing stuff for staging, I do stuff in threes. So I actually like the way that you've got the circles with the water bucket and the bottle of water and the plant in threes. So that actually works with part of what I do. And the, um, no, it's a beautiful color palette. So, you know, and they're also kind of, they've got the, um, the idea that they actually kind of bounce off of each other in the way that they've got the same shimmer to them, so they work really nicely together. And uh, some are kind of have a little more of a texture with the arm, so no, they work really beautifully together. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, I am on Facebook. Um, we're also on homestars.ca. Uh, um, I'm on Twitter and I'm actually launching my uh, website this coming weekend. Which I'm, I think this is my fourth try at putting a website <laughs> together and it's ready to go this weekend, which I'm so excited about. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I will be at uh, thisstagehouse.ca as of this weekend. And um, yeah, so we're out there. So just check. So put into uh, Google uh, this stage house and I think I'm on about eight different uh, sites out there, so you can find me in a few different places. So, yeah. All right, Jane, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. We're going to be back. And we're going to get an incredible performance by Acoustic Money Wear. Oh, 
how he suffered. Twenty-seven years doing hard labor. He was nothing, a rapist or a murderer. Mandela was a peacemaker. I said, if by the time I do this song, the media reports that Mandela is gone. And I'll sing it again. I said, if by the time I sing this song, y'all, hey, the media reports that Mandela is gone. This is what I will tell them. No, he's not gone. Remember the words that he performed. And his name, it shall live on and on. And I'll sing it again. I said, no. He's not gone. Remember the words that he performed. And his name, it shall live on and on, on and on. Mandela is. It could not tell them a high fear. Then I will leave my people who not die. Just like the Italians were captured by the ETO, that's a great person by King Selassie. Mandela is. Never give up, he never stop trying, he never yet turn a blind eye. How do you even them? All over the bed, no. All the child and child, then still one group survive. Why? Hold on. Mandela, hold on. Hold on. Mandela, please hold on. Hold on. Amazing, amazing. So that song, Mandela, was um, nominated for a Juno, is that right? Yeah, 2014 Juno. What inspired you to write that story? I mean, Mandela was uh, such a powerful person in history, but uh, what was your what was your personal connection? Um, I've always been a Mandela fan, right, and a freedom fighter as an artist. And this um, song came as a vision, actually, like a dream, half sleep and half awake and stuff like that. Me doing it in front of thousands of people, maybe in a European setting, in a tour, and then I woke up the following morning. I called my producer and said, "This is weird. I got a." Song with the lyrics. You got a vision. Yeah, I got a vision, so we put it together. And how much longer um, after the dream did you put it together? How long did it take? Well, the dream um, wasn't like some other artists that um, after Mandela died, they went to the studio and did a song. The song was um, actually the, um, actually August before Mandela died. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, kind of like a premonition, right? So tell me, what else are you? Um, what are you involved in right now? What project are you working on? Um, I'm working on a full length album and I have a couple of um, um, major labels that are interested after the com completing of the album. I'm also doing Gem Banner, which is on um, August the 4th in Scarborough. And um, also, I'm also a personal trainer too. Oh, really? Yeah. Can, can you see uh, some of the, the, uh, the uh, goods we're buying? <laughs> no? No, you're shy. Uh, yeah, I think you saw it there. So, <laughs> Yeah. So where can people find? They can find me on Facebook as Acoustic uh, Music Reggae Artist, right? And on Twitter, same same connection. And just look out. Um, I'm uh, coming out with my video. Um, Scene TV with Rogers shows a video of me currently called Ebony Eyes. That's a song that I've done um, about three years now, but it's on regular rotation of video. And just look out, because um, we're going to do a full length pro uh, promotion after the album is done this year. Fantastic, okay, it was a pleasure. Once again, for Acoustic. Thank you. We'll be back with Thank you. 
show you